Hey guys, for this lesson we're going to be looking at some new types of energy. Um, they're not exactly um, completely new and you'll see why in just a moment. Um, but for this video we're going to look at um, mainly mechanical energy and um, how conservative and non-conservative forces affect this type of energy. So let's have a look. Right, by definition mechanical energy is the sum of the kinetic and potential energies of a system. Um, yeah, and let's have a look at what conservative forces do. So conservative forces conserve the mechanical energy of a system. Right, now why is that? Well, let's look at non-conservative forces to understand that point. Non-conservative forces convert some energy into internal energy and so do not conserve mechanical energy. So, um, it might convert some of this kinetic or some of this potential energy into a third type of energy and therefore some of the mechanical energy is lost. Um, so that's why conservative forces don't do this. So that's why they um, conserve mechanical energy. So these are essentially um, extensions on the laws of conservation of energy. Now um, what this means if only conservative forces are acting, then we end up with the this particular expression that the initial mechanical energy of a system equals the final mechanical energy of the system. And if we expand it using the definition of mechanical energy, we end up with this: that um, the initial kinetic energy plus the initial potential energy of a system is equal to its final kinetic energy plus its final potential energy of a system. Now that that um, equation is actually really helpful in a lot of questions and I'll show you one now. Right, so we've got an example here. Um, just a hint, um, a lot of pendulum questions look really um, complicated but can be solved quite simply with this um, conservation of mechanical energy concept. So let's have a look at this one. In the diagram below, the pendulum has a length L and starts at rest at an angle of theta. Um, find its speed at its lowest point. So we've got a drawing of it here. and I've drawn some information in. We've got the length L over there and we've got um, the angle theta in there. Um, we've got y equals 0, I've defined as the top here, so where it's connected, and that means that y equals minus l is here, and what I want to do is find the initial height um, below the, the top there. So what I'm going to do is look at this right angle triangle over here, and I'm going to look at cos theta, right? Now that's equal to... Um, h over l which gives us that h is equal to l cos theta right so that's l cos theta below the roof so that'll be minus l cos theta we've defined downwards as negative and now I've got all three heights right so what I'm gonna do is gonna use what we've just learned that um the mechanical energies before and after the system are equal because there's no non-conservative forces here, it's mainly gravity. So um, I've got here um, the initial mechanical energy and I've written just the expression that we know um, and I've just written as a side here, note here that um, U equals MGH is the formula we're going to use. So the initial kinetic energy, um, well it's at rest so this will be zero and the initial potential energy will be mg times the height g l cos theta right so that's the initial mechanical energy now let's look at the final mechanical energy so same formula right um, we can sub in some values well the final kinetic energy um, we're not sure but what we can do is just sub in the formula that we know for kinetic energy and the final um, potential energy, well that is simply just um, using this formula again. Now what the height is minus L. Right, so now we've got 
two um, expressions and we can actually equate them because these two are equal due to the um, presence of only conservative forces, right? So yeah, those two are equal, so let's see what that gives us. Um, let's put, sub in what we know about the initial mechanical energy, so that's just minus mgl cos theta and that's equal to the final, let's sub that in. Right, now I'm going to move this across to this side. I'm just going to put, because we're trying to find V squared, I'm going to put the V squared on this side. And we end up with MGL minus MGL cos theta. Now you notice that everything is times L M. So if we divide both sides by M, these all disappear. Right? Um, we then can times both sides by 2, we end up with v squared over here, and I'm going to just take out the common factor of gl, and I end up with that, and finally I can take the square root, and we end up with v at the bottom equals 2gl outside of 1 minus cos theta. So that's actually quite a complicated formula, and you'll often get formula style questions like that. And um, that's an example of where if we equate mechanical energies, we can um, find um, solutions to problems. So that concludes this lesson. Thanks, guys. Cut study time with concise video summaries by top students. Visit SpoonFeedMe.com to view more free videos in this course and hundreds of others.